we're all made out of stem cells. So when our uh, moms got together with our dads and started to create, you know, the the fetus that we started from, and as we grew in the womb, um, the only reason we're around is because our stem cells actually created us. So that's why it's part of your soul because it is it's you and it's me. We're all made out of stem cells. The thing is that when we when we when we grow up even as adults, we're, we still have stem cells, some stem cells that are left. So if you take a look at 37 trillion human cells in the adult body, we got about 0.002% small fraction. Actually, the absolute number is pretty big. It's about 74 million, okay, of our cells still are stem cells, which means that they're hanging around waiting to actually fix and regenerate our bodies. Listen, when we were kids, we learned from our teachers that starfish and salamanders can regenerate, but people can't, right? That's what we all heard about. But science has turned that around. We now know that people do regenerate from the inside out and with these stem cells that are still left. It does it slowly, but that's what actually helps us heal uh, heal and injure our, when we're injured and also regenerate parts of ourselves, including our brain. In fact, there was a research um, study just uh, that produced, uh, just published just last week that just showed that, in fact, the adult brain actually still regenerates new neurons. So quite amazing what these things do. All right, part of our defense systems, obviously, very, very important. And it turns out that foods can actually um, enhance our stem cells, coax them out, help us repair ourselves, stimulate our own regeneration. And there are other foods that can actually damage them. And so this is actually another one of our defenses that very sensitive. We got to kind of treat them the right way, and then we can actually um, boost them whenever we need to. Yes, yes. And so as you mentioned, this is the beginning of life, you know, egg, sperm, meat. Then we have this uh, kind of explosion of activity with these stem cells. And these particular stem cells are able to diversify and become anything our bodies need. But as we develop, we start to have less and less of those type of stem cells and more have more specialized stem cells. But if you could, can you share where do our stem cells as we, you know, grow into adults, where do they hide out and how many do we have left? Because I would think that it's not one of the biggest resources that we have access to. Yeah, they're they're sort of like diamonds hiding in the mountain. Mm -hmm. And most of them are living inside our bone marrow, right? So, um, you know, our bones are actually hollow. Uh, they're not they're not actually filled with they're not all bone all the way solid through. In the middle of a bone marrow are tons of cells, including blood cells, but mostly stem cells. And so those stem cells live in there like bees living in a hive waiting for the time when they're actually needed. So on an average day, the body re releases a few of these bees, these stem cells, into the circulation. They're, they're doing, conducting surveillance, figuring out what needs to be repaired and doing their job. If you have an injury though, whether it's surgery or trauma, uh, if your uh, heart starved of uh, oxygen with clogging you know, from cholesterol, then more stem cells are called pouring out and they go right to the site of trouble. They're kind of like troubleshooters, right? Um, again, not many, they're like 0.002% of all of our cells are stem cells. So they're the minority of our cells, but they are powerful because as you say, wherever they go, they know how to turn into that tissue or that organ. Oh, that's so amazing. And you know, if we really think about this and I've done like a masterclass episode talking about the liver, we can lose like a third, even potentially two thirds of our liver and it's able to regenerate. Like we have this yeah. capacity within us. But we don't think right. about it in terms of like how amazing and how how good could could this get potentially if we really understand what stem cells can do in regenerating like you just mentioned our our brains or you know if somebody does lose a limb for example well you know that our nerves actually regenerate at two millimeters a day so you can take it out in a ruler and you know if you actually had a problem with your arm you can actually measure how much nerve you'll grow every single day to regenerate it so think about what think about the implication for the spinal cord Right? Yeah, or yeah. after a stroke, I mean, massive implications. But the, and, and you know, there are lots of biotech companies, uh, Sean, that are developing stem cell therapies where they're taking stem cells and processing them and trying to figure out ways to inject them back in for sickness. Again, we're back to that old model, which is a worthy one yeah. of looking for a sick person and figuring out how to actually inject a bullet back into them to you know, wipe out a disease. I'm all for that. Okay. However. The amazing thing that I write about in my book are the is the science has also shown us that foods can actually help support and coax out our own stem cells. So we don't need to be injected. We can just eat the right things. 
That's exactly what I want to talk about now. So I would love to talk about some of these foods and nutrients that are capable of, like you said, coaxing out and mobilizing these stem cells so our bodies can potentially be able to do these jobs that we've been talking about. Right. Well, you know, some of the, and this, but this is a relatively new area of research. Uh, I'll tell you the most surprising one first, I think your listeners will like this, is actually dark chocolate. Mm. So, you know, who, who needs another reason to like chocolate? But here's one that's really, really informed by science. So we know that really dark chocolate's made with cacao. Cacao is a natural substance that comes out of a bean. And inside those cacao beans are polyphenols, right? Really potent polyphenols. And so dark chocolate, which is usually 70% or higher, you can just look at that number on the side of a, the chocolate bar you might find, darker the better, the higher the number, the more potent it actually is, um, actually can uh, help mobilize those stem cells out of our bone marrow. There's a study I write about from UCSF in San Francisco, University of California in San Francisco, where they took patients with coronary disease. These are people that already had heart disease with narrowing of their arteries, and they gave them hot cocoa. So, you know, just like like made with dark chocolate, uh, and super dark chocolate, uh, twice a day, and they had them drink that every day for a month, 30 days. And they looked at their blood from the beginning to the very end, and they found that the only thing they ever did was actually drink this cocoa. That's the only intervention. It doubled the number of stem cells in the same person from beginning to end. And it also improved their circulation, their blood flow. When they measured it using the same kind of tests that we use in a medical clinic or for biotech companies, actually doubled the, the, the activity of their blood flow. So this is quite an amazing story that, you know, even something like chocolate, a small drink, it's only, it was only an eight ounce cup twice a day was powerful enough to do this. But there, and there are other beverages that also can actually mobilize stem cells. I had to keep my brain from popping out of my head right there. That's just nuts. That is incredible. That's so remarkable. Something so simple and it's like super prevalent in our culture, but we you know we're a little bit off, you know, we're thinking in terms of the candy bar, but getting like the real thing, you know, that closer to the, the natural state, the cacao, and then all the other things it has as well, because it got, again, the food doesn't just do one thing. We also have a great source of magnesium and iron, so it can potentially help with anemia and we've got uh, precursors to neurotransmitters and hormones like serotonin and anandamide and tryptophan, all from chocolate. And the stem cell thing, it just, it, that's, it's just too much. I, I love it. I love it so much. So cool. So we've got the stem cells covered and we talked about angiogenesis. So let's talk next about, and this one right here is super hot out there in, in, the, in the world of health and wellness. But here's the thing, I'm gonna preface this for you. You say in your book, we are no longer simply human. Let's talk, tell me what you mean by that. All right. Well, there's a term called holobiont, H-O-L-O-B-I-O-N-T. And that word refers to an organism that's actually made up of smaller organisms or other multiple organisms to function as a whole. And that's what we are. Uh, you know, we all call ourselves humans, but in fact, we're human cells mixed with bacteria cells and those healthy bacteria, which is what we call the microbiome. And by the way, there's 39 trillion of those bacteria living inside our body means that we're kind of an ecosystem. We're a big coral reef. Some of them are human cells and some of them are bacteria cells. And we collaborate uh, in this ecosystem. We make one gigantic neighborhood that gets together. And like any neighborhood, when you've got good people in it, good cells, good bacteria, things work pretty well. You know, everybody's happy. And when you've got some bad players, bad actors, and that can happen in the body as well, you get some bad bacteria in that neighborhood, you wind up having a disrupted ecosystem and you wind up having problems. And a lot, we're beginning to realize that a lot of health problems may actually be tracked back to problems in our bacteria. Our healthy bacteria aren't healthy anymore. So this is the, the new frontier for health starts inside our gut with our bacteria. 